Hi, my name is Dr. Glenn Simmons, Jr. I'm at Cornell University College of Veterinary Medicine in the Department of Biomedical Sciences. And I'm Dr. Stephanie Thomas. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology in the School of Medicine at the University of Minnesota. The paper that we co-authored together is along with an undergraduate trainee is titled Targeting Lipid Metabolism in the Treatment of Ovarian Cancer. One of the main reasons that we were interested in doing this work was because both of our research programs in our individual laboratories kind of work in areas that are separate but end up converging on this particular disease model. My research is interested in how lipid metabolism can affect the ability of the immune system to target tumors and help improve patient outcomes. And through that work, we've been working in several different uh, cancer models. The one that we're currently looking in has been lung cancer over the last year, but looking at some of the literature that uh, we've put together in studying both lung cancer as well as other cancer models, we found that ovarian cancer has very similar um, characteristics that makes it such that lipid metabolism is an interesting area to start looking into uh, developing research programs around. And um, as uh, Dr. Simmons mentioned, so our research areas are kind of complementary. So my um, research laboratory focuses on proteomics and we are taking a proteomics approach to studying ovarian cancer. So determining the molecular mechanisms and also studying some of the um, alter signaling pathways that confer a sensitivity or resistance to treatment. So the thing that was really surprising when looking at this, this particular work, uh, looking at ovarian cancer and specifically this high grade serous uh, subtype of ovarian cancer was this idea that the role of lipid metabolism has been pretty divisive in the field. So there's a lot of research that suggests that limiting lipid metabolism within cancer cells specifically um, is a very viable way of treating and eliminating tumors but there's also a lot of research that suggests that lipid metabolism itself isn't something that you would want to target, but it's actually a consequence of several upstream uh, mechanisms, uh, pathways that converge on lipid metabolism, but it's also kind of interwoven into the global metabolism of the tumor microenvironment. And so I think to me that meant that this area is so far from, you know, or the questions being asked of, of, in regard to lipid metabolism and cancer are very far from being solved. And I think we need to continue to ask more questions using more sophisticated techniques to investigate just which way um, we should go in terms of improving therapeutic outcomes. Yes, I definitely wholeheartedly agree. And then I think that was a great dovetail with the area of my research and that we do have a lot of targeted therapies that are available, but they're not 100% um, efficacious. So some of um, the targeted therapies that are available um, the patients that are stratified to be um, on those targeted therapies, only maybe about half of them do respond. And then these are the patients that supposedly have the favorable genetic uh, predisposition to respond to these targeted therapies. So from my laboratory's approach, that means that we have a lot of work to do. There's still a lot that we don't know about the signaling pathways that are, um, that are aberrant in ovarian cancer. And then what are some of the opportunities for us to identify novel drug targets. But before we can identify novel drug targets, there's still a lot of work that we need to do to figure out um, what are some of the alterations that are occurring just on the basic fundamental molecular mechanism um, level. So for, for me, it was very exciting to, uh, to really dig into the research and find out more about the role of lipid metabolism, lipid synthesis, lipid catabolism in conferring um, sensitivity or resistance to treatment, and also um, some of these lipids, um, thinking about them from the perspective of them being prognostic or diagnostic biomarkers. So really along the theme of, we have targeted therapies, but they're not great. They're not efficient. They don't work for all patients. So there's really a lot of opportunity for us to study additional areas and lipids is one of those areas. Right, and based on the work that my laboratory is interested in, we're actually looking to take uh, kind of this basic understanding of how lipid metabolism is central to what we're now understanding is this altered metabolism within, within the cancer uh, uh, disease state, but then also to find new models to investigate these things so that we can come up with new targets to kind of understand the interconnectedness of various protein-protein interactions and in, uh, protein or gene environment interactions. And so for us to do that, my laboratory is now utilizing three-dimensional bioprinting to develop new models to ask questions of how these different cell types are interacting with each other in a three-dimensional space and then manipulating the environment in which these cells are growing to show that how those two things 
the cells in the three-dimensional space and the environmental uh, nutrient space interact with each other and how that impacts how therapies are received and, and the overall effect of those therapies on removing or eliminating tumors. Yep, and then so for my research, um, we are, our laboratory is predominantly based on, we do take like a mass spectrometry based approach to most of our analyses. So we are invest, um, really interested in um, deploying some discovery based studies and also some targeted based studies. So um, the way that that pipeline looks is we have an experimental model. So right now we have some cell lines that we're working with and also some patient derived xenograft models that we're looking at. And we can um, look at differences in um, protein relative abundance. And then once we have um, some viable candidates, those candidates are then moved along the pipeline for um, the development and deployment of some targeted um, proteomic, uh, mass spec based proteomic assays to really figure out whether these changes are indeed correlating with um, disease stage. So in or I, I think the, the final thing that we really want to make sure uh, that we do before we close this out is to thank all of those that were involved in this work. Uh, together, Dr. Thomas and I actually co-mentored an undergraduate student who helped us put together this, this manuscript uh, by the name of Saliha Chowdhury. Um, so we definitely want to acknowledge her as well as both of our institutions for, I think, supporting the work that we do. Um, because at one point we were at the same institution when we started this work. Um, I was once at the University of Minnesota um, along with uh, Dr. Thomas. Yes, and yes, I don't think I have anything else to add. Um, definitely, this was a great, great collaboration. I think there's um, a lot, a, a lot more that, a lot of more work that needs to be done in the realm of um, ovarian cancer and lipid metabolism. Absolutely, and I think um, one other thing, I guess, an additional addendum is just to say that the experience that we have both had with uh, publishing with Uncle Target thus far has been um, pretty smooth, especially compared to other, other journals. I think the process is pretty straightforward and the review process is not um, too arduous um, to getting the you know, information out there you know, for the public to, to get a hold of and help to kind of broaden the knowledge base and help uh, other researchers develop you know, more interesting research questions and help move the entire field forward. Great, yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure working with Dr. Simmons. Um, he was the one who spearheaded this project and, um, or yeah, I'm definitely thankful for his, uh, for the opportunity to be involved in this project and to really um, provide my laboratory with um, just other opportunities for exploring um, other avenues of ovarian cancer.